Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome you back to another episode of our Planet Zoo franchise mode. Let's play. We're gonna dive right back into Elite Zoo South. It has once again been far too long since our return to Planet Zoo, and for that, once more, I find myself apologizing, folks. It's been wild. I, it's been uh, it's been interesting trying to get back on track, with a proper schedule with uh, everything being as uh, insane as it's been lately. And again, for that, I can't unfortunately do much more than apologize. But, uh, yeah, between, I don't know, er the erratic sleep, the insomnia from time to time, and uh, just trying to keep up with everything that's going on in the world of gaming, uh, in all of these genres that I like to cover on the channel, it's been, uh, it's been a little difficult. So, uh, again, I'm sorry for the uh, delay in this episode, uh, but I assure you that uh, it weighs heavy on my mind and heart, and I do want to try and get back on schedule properly like we were before. I love that kind of like regular kind of flow of content. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of structure. I, I like spontaneity from time to time, but I also like a bit of structure. And uh, it's been bothering me a lot that I haven't been able to stick to mine <laughs> for the last little while. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll get there, folks. We'll get there. Uh, with that said, though, there's a lot to get done today, and I am really excited to get to it. We are going to be adding the uh, southern white rhino to our massive enclosure. I do believe that's the last animal we need to add there, if memory serves me right. And uh, it should be um, it should be interesting to see how things actually work out with that you know final piece of the puzzle in place. Now, just as a reminder, uh, the southern white rhino is not compatible or or. Not that it's not compatible, but it doesn't give an interspecies bonus with all of the other animals that are in that uh, enclosure as well. It only does that with one of the other animals, so it's not going to be as beneficial. But of course, it's also not like it's detrimental or anything, because the um, it, it's not like you know it's a it's a predator for any of the other animals or anything like that. So uh, it should be nice to see that place get filled out. And as some of you brought up in the uh, comments, actually of the previous episode, I think it was, um, we are seeing them be relatively happy with the space largely because the herds aren't fully filled out and you're absolutely right i mean we don't have you know 20 of one animal and 12 of another and 15 of another we kind of have small herds right now groups of like you know four five six maybe 10 at most in some extreme cases uh and that's definitely helping keep the uh, enclosure sustainable without those relatively small herd sizes we might actually see a touch of trouble here and there, and we might actually have to expand that enclosure. Now, I do wonder if we uh, use that as a way to force ourselves to keep the herd sizes relatively small uh, in, at that enclosure, because it's a good way to kind of, again, force our hand uh, into some management. On which topic, on which note, today's session is, oh my god. What a cutie. Today's session is going to be dedicated to uh, adding those uh, southern white rhinos and perhaps even doing a little bit of uh, management focus. As some of you pointed out in the comments again of the previous episode, I have... Uh, well, I wouldn't say I've been neglecting the management portion of things. It's just that we've been uh, preoccupied with other elements that uh, have resulted in... Uh, well, let's put it this way. There were a lot of inbreeding notifications uh, in the uh, previous episode, and quite a few of them actually slipped past me, which is not ideal. Now, again, it's like, is it the end of the world? It's not the end of the world if we have one or two issues of, you know, I guess, inbreeding. Uh, even as I say that, I know that it's not true. Look at this crowd, though. Holy crap. I didn't realize how many people there were sort of at the, uh, the entrance over here. Um, but yeah, the... Uh, Look, it, it, it's not ideal. It's, it's, not, it's not good to have inbreeding happening. So hopefully with a bit of uh, time spent on management today, we'll be able to avoid that uh, moving forward. I, I, I do think there are a couple of problem enclosures in particular where we might need to pay special attention. Uh, but I think between yeah, adding a, a new animal today and some management level stuff, uh, that'll take up most of today's episode, if not all of it. Now, I want to mention a couple of things. Uh, one being, if you've been enjoying this series and you know you want to see it continue, as always, folks, the best way to make sure that happens is by leaving a like and a comment down below. It does make a very big difference in, again, how I approach content on the channel. I look at the number of likes and comments and, of course, views as well. I mean, I don't mention that because I, I feel like it's a bit of a given, but I consider all that when it comes time to figure out what I should do more or less of. Uh, likes and comments make a difference in that, uh, like comparing likes and comments to views is a good indicator of the number of folks watching versus the number of uh, repeated viewings, potentially. I mean, it's a it's, it's not a very clean bit of math or anything, but uh, 
but it, uh, it's it's a rough indicator for me. Oh God, what a cutie! Um, but yeah, so please don't hesitate to uh, to keep letting me know. Uh, again, as as a game gets older and as a as a series goes on and on, uh, interest tends to wane, and that's perfectly cool. That's perfectly all right. But uh, of course, I have to be uh, uh, you know I have to be cognizant of of, of people's interest, and I, I always like to uh, keep in mind what people want to see on the channel. Um, and 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 numbers and comments are a great way to uh, to get that feedback. Uh, to get that uh, sort of, uh, I guess, affirmation of whether I should keep something going or if I should uh, change my approach in some way. And in fact, I've got a, gotten a lot of feedback with regards to, you know, what to do uh, in, a, in a post-Planet Zoo era. And, and, and there's quite a bit of support actually for uh, like a, a one episode a week kind of an approach. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. That bridge is, is still a ways away. We'll cross it when we get there. Uh, what I will say though, uh, with regards to a bridge that's a lot closer, a bridge that was... Uh, a bridge that was uh, far, far away a while ago, but now it's time to cross it, I suppose. Um, a trade session. We've talked about it a couple of times. Our uh, trade center is so full. Now, it's not, it's not, it's not near the new limit that the uh, developers have set. It's not near that 200, I think, animal limit. Uh, but I don't want to wait until we have 200 animals in the trade center before we do a trade session because that'll be like that'll be like a four-hour trade session. And uh, I don't know if that's really what uh, any of us would consider to be the best approach. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I don't think that would be the best approach. Uh, I think uh, I think more uh, sort of uh, con consumable uh, lengths of trade sessions are, are ideal. And uh, with that in mind, I'm thinking that next session will actually be a live streamed session. So again, that will be so technically it's midnight eastern time saturday but just to make it easy the uh typical release time of the next episode is going to be when we uh we do our little trade session and it'll be a live streamed session uh and i think it'll be fun i think beyond trading as we've done before right beyond trading we'll uh, also discuss uh plans moving forward for for uh elite zoo south and for you know other aspects as well uh th i'm sure there'll be plenty to talk about uh when we when we do that live stream but yes the live stream will be uh, the same release time as always for the Saturday episode. Now, for some of you, it'll still be Friday, um, but uh, again, same time as always. So if you if you remember the time, if you're familiar with the time, that's when we're going to go live. Uh, I will probably almost certainly be tweeting it out. A uh, link to that is in the description down below uh, when it's time to go live, like as uh, you know, we're shortly before going live. Um, and uh, And if you don't follow me on Twitter, then I guess the best way to know what's up is to uh do a bit of uh time zone conversion i guess <laughs> but yeah midnight eastern time uh saturday so it would be what is that it's like 9 p.m pacific time on friday yeah but everybody for everybody else it'll be for everybody ahead of me it'll be it'll be saturday so so midnight eastern time saturday um We'll be doing a live stream, and it'll be it'll be great. I've I've enjoyed the live streams we've done. Uh, I mean, it started with episode 100 for Elite Zoo North. Uh, that was a lot of fun because we did the tour and everything, and then the uh, trade sessions we've done have been a lot of fun. We've been, uh, you know, we've been we've been coming up with some good numbers. We've been having a good time. We've been uh, really helping uh, keep the zoo uh, going, especially uh, with regards to conservation credits, but also just with regards to you know hanging out and having a good time. We have 67 animals to trade. So it's going to be it's going to be quite intense. Uh, if we go and organize by species, there will be some western lowland gorillas, some western chimpanzees, a bunch of really high quality lions. This is our storage? Yeah, yikes. Wow. Okay. Yeah, we got a bunch of high quality west african lions. We got some spotted hyenas, we got some southern cassowaries, also all very high quality. We got some snow leopards, tons of saltwater crocodiles, most of them of the highest quality, some of decent quality. Um don't mind the red on these guys i believe it's just because we have them oh is it not because we've i'm pretty sure we just have them on contraceptives i don't think i actually have infertile um young adult uh, saltwater crocodiles especially I, I wouldn't mark an a star like that right uh of course the red panda is not up for for grabs but the ringtail lemur we've got all these red kangaroos some plain zebras and a bunch a bunch a bunch of Nile monitors up for grabs as well. We got some jaguars, plenty of jaguars, a couple of hippos, some giant ant eaters, some dingoes, some cheetahs. Wow. And a couple of Baird's tapirs as well. I mean, this is going to be a huge trade session. And it's always, I always enjoy doing trade sessions 
uh, in a way that almost ensures that you know the community will will get some of those animals because we can price them in a way that new players are able to get animals that they might not might otherwise not be able to as cheaply uh, and also in a way that allows um, well it's just like you know it's fun to, to to see these animals have a home uh and and sometimes you know some of y'all have shared them uh on twitter or on the discord and stuff and it's just it's nice to see the end result i guess it's it's a it adds a layer to it all i guess yeah adds a layer to it all anyway enough of my uh my, my ramblings i feel like they were important ramblings today though because they kind of dictate the future of uh, Elitsu South in, in the near term with the upcoming live stream and the, the trade session that I have planned, uh, but also plans for today's episodes in general. So let me just take a quick look over here because uh, I believe we'll be finishing off some research too that will unlock uh, some fun facts. And we'll spend some time with those as well, of course. Uh, the artwork got a little bit of love over here, but I, I don't think it was the artwork I was thinking about. I believe it was the, yes, African Buffalo. We'll see some uh, Buffalo fun facts today and then we'll be able to begin research on the uh, Springbok perhaps Thompson's Gazelle was sort of relatively recently added, so that can wait. Oh man, we have so many animals that need researching. The King Penguin has had no love so far. Uh, let's go ahead and get... Uh, let's get uh, Trigart on the Black Wildebeest. And let's get, uh, I think in... Becky Jones on the King Penguin. And how about... How about... I'm wondering if I want uh, more researchers or, or, or people going around uh, checking for, for welfare and, 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 and things like that. Um, I'm thinking, let's get Brandy Lee on the common ostrich. I can't believe I haven't researched the ostrich yet either. Okay, and then some of these guys, they need, uh, they need to uh, upgrade their, uh, their, their, their level over, over here. So vet, can I just do this? Oh, beautiful, I can. Wonderful. And that automatically does it for... Where, okay, amazing. Keepers, boom, there you go. Love it. I don't know why it didn't occur to me sooner that you can just do that, but uh, but here we are. Here we are, and you can. Educators, you know, I really do want to try and get those animal talks back up and running. Some of you have said in the comments that uh, they do seem to be working now, so... Okay. Worth a shot, I think. Maybe. Again, it's just that I, I think the problem is, like many things that I do in this game, I think the problem has been that I'm kind of overextending their technical capabilities and limitations, and that's stopping uh, that's stopping them from 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 working. You know, I have like four of them where one might do, and because I have four of them, guests are always going from one to the other, and, and they're not like managing their. Uh, their 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 schedules appropriately. I don't know though. Let's we'll, we'll try it out. We'll, we'll we'll reactivate the uh the the animal talks and and hopefully we will see the um we'll see them work out. Um really the llama is the most uh, learned about animal you, for real? Guest rating is actually uh, sorry, guest education rate, rating is actually maxed out. Well, that's pretty cool. Well, that's pretty cool. The llama. I I is it just because Uh, I yeah I mean I, I guess it's a it's it's a combination of a few different things conservation boards uh, is this all no you know what this is uh, this is in general this is not specific to the animal um, I, I think it's because the llama is this huge like thoroughfare basically thoroughfare thoroughfare why is the word I'm not sure which one's right that's one of those words that I always used to get mixed up as a kid anyway um, it, it's it's a it's a huge uh, there's a lot of traffic almost consistently. Uh, in uh, you know, you know uh, around and, and, and past the llamas, so I, I guess that's why. Um, cool. And the saltwater crocodiles, similarly, right? People are on their way to the lions. People are on their way to the Africa center area. They, they'll walk past the, the saltwater crocs. They're picking up food. They'll they'll hear some saltwater croc information, I guess. Uh, the giant ant eater. I'm gonna guess again. We have uh, Pachamama's garden in a very high traffic area. So are they just kind of like absorbing information by walking through it or like what's going on here I, I i felt like i've i feel like most of our uh exhibits do a decent job of educating guests but this is cool this is I, I've, I've always loved that they've added more levels of detail um the, it, it's just it to me like one thing about uh, planet zoo that i wish would get more attention i guess is uh, is the management aspect of things um it, it is uh it, it does a it does a pretty good job. It does a pretty good job, uh, but I would like to see even more. 
Um, I would like to see... Um, if, if you watch my video about Jurassic World Evolution 2 and you, you, you hear me talk about um, guest types and things like that, uh, or scientist management in that video, those are some features that I wouldn't mind seeing in uh, Planet Zoo or like, you know, Planet Zoo 2, I guess, at this point, uh, when it eventually and inevitably comes out. Uh, but it, it adds a bit more to, like, as an example, when your staff gets tired in... Uh, in, in Planet Zoo, I almost called it Elite Zoo. When your staff gets tired in Planet Zoo, they don't really do much. Like, they work a little less efficiently, but you don't really feel the impact of it. Uh, at least at a certain scale, it just stops making a difference. Uh, whereas, again, uh, when I was playing Jurassic World Evolution 2, um, if your scientists are upset, they start to sabotage the park and, and things like that. Which is a bit more fitting for, for Jurassic Park and Jurassic World. You know, it's a bit more like in keeping with the movies and the series and all that, sure. But, uh, you know, um, disgruntled employees cause trouble anywhere in the real world as well. You know, if you go to a, if you go to a, a, a zoo or a theme park or, or anything, a disgruntled employee will definitely, you'll feel it, you know, as, as a customer, you'll feel it. And uh, as a manager, you need to make sure your employees don't become disgruntled employees. Um, so I wish there was more of that going on, I guess. But uh, that, that's my one kind of like, that, 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 apart from like bugs, obviously. Uh, that's one of my big things with, uh, with Planet Zoo is that I wish it leaned even more heavily into management stuff. Look at the, oh my God, these animals are terrifying. Look at the, look at that. Look at the definition there. Anyway, sorry. Uh, I was zooming in so that I could go ahead and pop open a Zoopedia article, entry, whatever you want to call it, and find interspecies enrichment. So, got them, got them, got them elsewhere, got them elsewhere, got them elsewhere, uh, got them, got them, got them. So, yeah, I think the southern white rhino is the only one left. Now, the southern white rhino is also, that's where it was, that's where my confusion came from. They're also a fan of the Nyala. So they get along with everybody plus the Nyala. That's what it was. And so the Nyala is only a fan, particularly of the Southern White Rhino. So you know what? The Southern White Rhino is not the last animal we'll be adding to this enclosure. We will be adding the Nyala as well. Now, if I recall correctly, we're going to do this check over here. Uh, I do have a gift Nyala, if I'm not mistaken. I do. I do indeed. I also have this ostrich. I wonder, do we, are we, are we, are we, are we able to... Are we able to? This was pointed. The, the ostrich was pointed out in the comments, and it uh, it keeps slipping my mind. So thank you very much. Um, let's check species data. One male, seven females. Okay, we already have our one male over here, but we could swap him out, right? We could swap him out. Where is our ostrich? Whoop, there we go. I'm an ostrich. Hungry. They're all hungry. We actually have quite a few males. How are they? I'm surprised they're not fighting. But yeah, I could take them out, and, and, and what, what this would do is if I take one, two males and release them to the wild, and we get in our gift ostrich. Yeah, let's release them to the wild. We bring in our gift male ostrich, and then um, we don't have to worry about any inbreeding with the, uh, the offspring over here, right? Uh, so animal trading to the rewards. We have our... We okay. Transfer to animal storage. Where are you? Ostrich. I know how to spell L M N O. I know my alphabet. Wait. Do I? Do I not? Where's my? Okay, you know what? Listen. Let's just, oh, right. It's the common ostrich. I keep forgetting when they throw in the common. Yeah, I, it slips my mind. But let's go ahead and send you to the zoo. Really great stats over here. Go ahead and bring you in over to Nyati Plains. Perfect. Uh, so that's that taken care of. Now, why everybody here is very hungry. Let's go ahead and add some more um, feeders. I thought I'd, I'd done enough previously, but I, I guess not. I guess not. Pop you down over here. Uh, we need... This is a food bowl as well. Go ahead and add you maybe over here. And another one of these maybe over there. Sure. Just to make sure these guys are all getting fed, because that's a lot of hungry um, notifications. We got this down. I feel like I did add these guys last time, and uh, and I just haven't given it enough time for these to get filled out. Because I remember the conversation about adding this one last time. I think it was last time. Uh, but you know, I'm just a little nervous seeing that many hungry animals. Uh, that doesn't make me very very comfortable. Um, but right. So okay. Sorry. All that to say, the southern white rhino will be added 
um, and then we'll be adding the Nyala as well. You know, I'm kind of tempted to add the Nyala first only because we, uh, we've never seen the Nyala. No, you know what? We're going to do the Rhino. We're going to do the Rhino because that's what I said we're going to do at the beginning. And also because when we add the Rhino, the Rhino will get along with everybody else. And then when the Nyala comes in, the Nyala won't feel like, yo, what is this? I don't like anybody here. At least it'll get along with the uh, White Rhino. Anyway, uh, so that's what we'll do. We'll add the White Rhino today. We'll do some management stuff. We'll add the Nyala. Uh, not next time because next time we're doing the trade session. But the time after that, we'll add the Nyala. Uh, and... Uh, with adding the Nyala, we'll also build the hard shelter over here because that's running out, right? And we need to, I want to first get all the animals in before building that hard shelter so we know just how much hard shelter construction needs to be done to actually fulfill all these animals' needs. And obviously, we'll go over the top because we want to, <laughs> over the top because hard shelter goes over the top. Wow, that was actually unintentional. Um, but uh, we, we will go over the top because as the herds grow, we want to make sure they all have room uh, to, you know, tuck under. Uh, but anyway, Southern white rhino. This is actually one of the success stories of conservation. So uh, on this on this rather gloomy uh, Wednesday afternoon, um, it'll be uh, a bit of warmth, I suppose. Uh, hopefully it's not too gloomy when you're watching it, but uh, gloomy as hell right now. Southern white rhinoceros. The Ceratotherium simum simum is my butchery of that pronunciation. They are near threatened with a population in wild of 18,000. The southern white rhinoceros is a large spe species of ungulate native to southern Africa, South Africa, Namibia, Zimbabwe, Kenya, Uganda, and Zambia. They are large, broad animals with thick gray skin. The southern white rhinoceros has two horns, with the front horn being much longer than the secondary horn. The head of the rhinoceros is almost rectangular in shape with a square snout. They have protuberant ears on the top of their head and a hump at the base of the neck formed of the musculature that supports the head. Oh damn, that's all muscle? You know, I've read this before when we did the DLC, but uh, a lot of it, I'll, I remember much of it, but obviously some of the finer details do uh, slip past the sieve of memory, <laughs> of, of, of long-term memory, especially when you sleep poorly. Um, but uh, didn't remember that. That's a lot of muscle. I would not want to mess with that. Uh, for, for more reasons than the muscles on its neck. I mean, the two giant horns are a part of why I wouldn't want to upset a rhino as well. Um, anyway, <laughs> male southern white rhinoceros measure between 12.21 feet and 13.2 feet in length, are 68 inches to 75.2 inches tall, and weigh an average of 5,060 pounds. Now again, that number means nothing to me. But uh, it's got one more digit than usual, so I imagine it's huge. Again, I use kilograms, right? Uh, females measure between 11.22 feet and 12.045 feet in length. That is very precise. <laughs> Wait, well, precise or accurate? Precise. I forget which. I forget which one's which. But precision and accuracy are two different things when it comes to how many decimal places you're using and how many decimal places you're using with. Accuracy, I'm, I'm, I'm mixing them up, but that's one extra, that's one extra um, uh, digit after the decimal than we've ever seen before. 12.045, very, very, very specific there. Uh, in length, they are 64 inches to 70.8 inches tall and weigh an average of 3,740 pounds. That's actually a huge discrepancy. That's, that's a huge difference. That's a 1,300 pound approximately difference. Yeah. Wow, okay. I don't care what SI unit you're using, That's uh, that's got to be a big difference. The southern white rhinoceros is near threatened, but has returned from the brink of extinction thanks to long-term conservation efforts. The species was reduced to 20 individuals in the early 20th century thanks to overhunting for meat and sport. Since then, consistent protection, captive breeding programs, and reintroduction to their historical home range has meant the southern white rhinoceros population has recovered spectacularly. They continue to be threatened by poachers who hunt the animal illegally for their horns. The horns can be sold for a high price for use in traditional medicine. So this is honestly, like, huge. Uh, I, when I initially was, uh, well, when I, I think when I initially talked about the southern white rhinoceros during our DLC miniseries, uh, I, I, I might have downplayed the significance of this um, initially and then, and, then, and then sort of course corrected. And I want to be crystal clear that that is huge. To go from 20 individuals, 20 to zero to 18,000 is 
like an unfathomable increase. That is really impressive and just sort of a symbol of what proper conservation efforts can do. Now, I mean, some animals are <laughs> like doomed to extinction from their own behavioral patterns as well. I've talked multiple times about sort of how the panda is very uh, resistant <laughs> to help at times um but uh but 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 i mean this is this is really impressive and it, it really is quite uh quite great to uh uh to read about and to see and and and, and to think about it, it really gives a glimmer of hope all is not lost you know it it's not like it, it really is a, a bit of positivity uh which helps so much when it comes to some of these conversations especially about conservation and 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 the state of things and 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 how you know what yeah even though it might feel like it's too late it, it, sometimes it, it still isn't 20 20 individuals 20 people that 20 people that's the size of like i don't know uh, that's almost the size of the average like thanksgiving dinner party you know like 20 people that's 20 is how many southern white rhinoceroses there were at one point and now we have 18,000. I don't know. I think it's I think it's huge. It makes me makes me quite happy. Um, also, just as a, as a quick side note, there have been um, relatively recent um, endeavors to flood the black market with counterfeit uh, horns. Um, and the idea being that so the they're they're so perfectly um, recreated. They're such perfect knockoffs that you can't tell the difference between a real uh, rhino horn and one of these fakes. Um, I, I'm pretty sure you can like test them after the fact or something. I'm sure there's a way to find out because that's how it kind of acts. As a, there's a couple of ways in which it acts as a bit of a deterrent. So basically you flood the market with this uh, product and on the one hand, it's no longer as rare as it once was. So it feels like it's worth a little less. Um, and on the other hand as well, you don't know if you're getting the real deal or if you're getting a fake, uh, which makes it a, a less stable uh, thing to, to, to buy and sell. So by flooding the black market with these fake horns, um, the, the, we, we've done a very good job of trying to reduce the desirability of, uh, of, of the actual horns. And so that's really been helping uh, sort of take the, the poachers out at their knees because it's dangerous to to hunt these animals you know not only are the animals themselves dangerous but there are a lot of uh, organizations uh, and, and and a lot of uh, things in general just people set up to uh, counter the poachers in 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 many ways <laughs> some which are uh, well quite painful uh and uh, and so already it's a dangerous thing to do and now if it's also not financially worth it then you know those poachers will uh will ideally uh give up right um and that, that's that's the idea at least and and from my if memory serves me right it's been quite effective it's been quite effective in in yes reducing the value of uh of the rhino horn and again it's it's a twofold thing right on the one hand a buyer doesn't know if they're getting the real deal or a fake so they might not want to invest in it anymore and uh with the uh, without the scarcity you know it, it it's worth even less uh to, to to begin with it's like uh yeah i don't know it's good stuff <laughs> it's good stuff and honestly again these numbers just make me so uh so happy uh but yeah i mean sorry I, tangents but i feel like those are those are fun tangents these are these are uh there's some interesting stuff being done with regards to the uh rhinos now the horns i'm pretty sure those are for the southern white rhinos specifically but i wouldn't be surprised if that same practice is being used for other animals that are poached for their you know horns and tusks and all that kind of stuff um actually i kind of want to look deeper into that but it is a it is it is good to see the uh the clever ways in which we're countering poachers because it's not so easy to just guard eighteen thousand animals that's a lot of uh manpower that's required uh but yeah flood the market make it uh undesirable and uh Ah, genius is genius. That's uh, that's the human mind being used for good, you know. <laughs>
Natural habitat, of course, Southern Africa, like uh, like we were told. Uh, grassland is their preferred biome, so hopefully they'll fit right in over here. I think they'll be pretty comfortable, but they need a lot of space. They need a lot of room to roam, and I think we have more than enough room over here, but I think among all of the animals we've added in this enclosure, they'll be the ones that need the most amount of space to, uh, uh, to be comfortable. And uh, again, I don't believe they get too big as far as their herd is concerned. You know, you know what? I might be mistaken. Yeah, okay, they don't get so big, but... Uh, but when you have a full herd of five, um, it can get pretty uh, pretty packed, right? But the group size, excluding ju in excluding sorry juveniles, is one to five. One male, four females. Male bachelor group size is one to two. Female bachelor group size is one to five, and that you know from that you can derive that they are male dominant. And as you can see, yes, dominant system is dominant male claims territory and females within. Uh, they are polygynous. Relation with humans is confident. But guests cannot enter the habitat. I will give you one guess as to probably why. Uh, the size average for males is 5.874 feet tall at the shoulder. And for females is 5.577. 5 Sorry, losing my voice. Um, I'm actually curious as to the level of this uh, you know, precision slash accuracy. I wish I could remember which one was which. Last time I studied that was like in like the 11th grade or something. The 10th or 11th grade when we were... <laughs> talking about accuracy versus precision um anyway life expectancy is 43 years across the board and weight averages again like we saw earlier 5060 for uh pounds for males and 3740 pounds for females again massive discrepancy um <laughs> mass discrepancy uh, age of sexual maturity is at five years sterility is at 46 years so Okay, right, of course. This one, it, uh, it always throws me off. It makes perfect sense, but it always throws me off to see life expectancy at that, but then sterility at a, at, a, at a larger age. Right, of course, because life expectancy is an average. So obviously many rhinos live well past that. Anyway, I don't know why it throws me off. It makes perfect sense. It shouldn't throw me off. Uh, sterility at 46 years. Offspring per mating event is one. Gestation for 18 months. Interbirth is 60 months. And reproduction in captivity is easy and also very adorable. Well, the results at least. Social needs. Male southern white rhinoceroses are solitary. They do not interact except to mate or challenge each other over territory or mates. Females may be solitary or may live in a temporary, loosely bonded group of several females and their offspring. Now, what determines if a group of females in this way is called a harem or not? I'm curious. And if anybody has the answer, please share, because we've seen that term come up quite a few times. And I've said it before, I'll say it again, I feel like I need to say it every time it comes up. The use of the word harem is completely incorrect in English. It has been borrowed and it has been butchered in what a harem is actually supposed to be. And now it has a lot of, uh, and I don't want to call them negative connotations, that's not the right word. But it has a lot of connotations that aren't accurate to its original meaning. Uh, and in fact are like the antithesis of its original meaning. Uh, every time I say the word harem, and it comes up a lot in this game, I feel the need to to say that because it, it's it's one of those words that's been uh, not just borrowed, but borrowed and, and, and changed intrinsically to mean something that it doesn't mean. And so if you're, if you're using the word in its original sense, people think you're using it in its new sense, and then it, it creates a it creates a, it creates a nuisance um, and it's a, it's it's it's, a, it's, un, it's unfortunate anyway reproduction dominant male rhinoceroses are territorial and will preside over a large area of land that females will graze on females may whistle to males when they are ready to mate or a male may detect a fertile female by smell when a receptive female enters a male's territory he will track her and remain close to her for 5 to 20 days until she reaches peak fertility the male will attempt to prevent the female from entering the territory of other males during this time. However, if she successfully leaves his territory, he will leave her alone. If courtship is successful, they will mate. Copulation lasts 15 to 30 minutes, and rhinoceroses will mate several times over 2 to 5 days while the female is most fertile. Following copulation during this fertile period, the female will leave the male. Females will give birth to one calf after a pregnancy of 530 to 550 days. Males do not take part in rearing offspring. Newborn rhinoceroses will feed exclusively from their mother for two months. Then they will start eating soft, young grasses in addition to milk. Weaning begins at six months old. Rhinoceros calves will be weaned between 12 and 18 months of age. The female rhinoceros will begin to distance herself from her young and may be actively hostile towards them when they reach 2.5 to 3 years old. She will then become sexually receptive again. 
Female rhinoceroses become sexually mature at 3.5 years old, but are unlikely to mate until they are 5 years old. Male rhinoceroses become sexually mature at 5 to 7 years old, when they are also strong enough to guard and maintain territory. Southern white rhinoceroses are easy to breed in captivity, as long as they are provided with plenty of space. Oh, okay, good to know. It's uh, I, I love when they add a little note that uh, points out how the animal is a little different in captivity versus in the wild. I mean, we saw that with the uh, hyenas as well. Many of you were pointing out how the, oh, it's strange, the hyenas, usually they're in like massive packs, but when they're in captivity, uh, apparently no, very much no. Uh, I, I really find those to be particularly insightful uh, little notes that they leave in these uh, in the species data sections. Um, this is interesting though, again, another, another interesting sort of mating behavior or, or, or approach over here. Um, I do wonder if like, so like, how does it work, right? Like if... My, my one, I think, big question I have out of this uh, is, so, okay, so first of all, when I was reading, like, oh, he will track her and remain close to her for 5 to 20 days until she reaches pre peak fertility, all I could have in my head, all I had, rather, in my head was that gif of that one guy, like, behind the tree or whatever, rubbing his hands. I, I, I don't know the context of that gif, but I just had that in my mind. This rhino, like, peeking around the corner of a tree, <laughs> keeping an eye on this, uh, this, this female rhino. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> But that aside, um, like, how does it work? So the male will uh, leave the female alone if she successfully leaves his territory. Okay, great. But if the courtship is successful, they will mate. What is the courtship? What is the actual, like, what determines that, right? Like, if basically the female is wandering through this territory and she's so she's receptive she's wandering through this territory she might whistle to gain attention or he might catch the scent and 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 sort of uh, give chase i guess for lack of a better word and the male will attempt to prevent the female from entering the territory of other males okay so the male is going to like actively prevent her from leaving if courtship is successful they will mate okay what is that courtship like what is that uh, does do they just mean if they successfully mate, because then they would say that because it's not like they're shying away from the word mate. So what is that courtship? And what determines if it's successful or not? And if it's successful and they mate over the next two to five days when they continue to repeatedly mate uh, while the female is most fertile, will that female still be making attempts to leave the territory? Or do they kind of have like a two to five day kind of commitment where the female's like, okay, well, I guess I'm here now. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm trying to like trying to figure out the best way to phrase it, but you, you know what I mean. I, I I'm curious about that. Like, once that uh, f once the first let's say copulation happens, uh, does the female then kind of say, okay, cool, it's us for the next you know five days or so, uh, and, and then the female you know leaves to give birth and stuff. Uh, or or does she still actively make attempts to just roam around? And does the male still have to actively try and prevent that female from leaving his territory? Just something to, I don't know, something, this this is a question that this raises uh, in my mind. Anyway, moving on, research status, of course, we have nothing. It looks like a lot of their stuff is the same as everything else. No surprises there. Of course, some food to research uh, and enrichment we're already very well aware of. The Nyala to come next. Uh, with that done, let's go ahead to animal trading and pick ourselves up. A couple of rhinos. Southern white rhinos, to be specific, of course. Just throw in some Indian rhinos by mistake. No. Uh, what do we have over here? Actually, a couple of options. Nothing too amazing, though. Yeah. I feel like... You know, I actually haven't taken a look at the uh, Steam... Uh, uh, what's it called? Steam... Steam... Steam DB? No, not Steam DB. Steam Charts. I haven't looked at Steam Charts for this game in some time. I do wonder what the player counts and stuff are like. Um, because actually before we pick this up, uh, there is currently a challenge that's happening, a community challenge that's already been hit, but it's a much easier challenge. Cheeky monkey, breed 10,000 mandrills. If you had cheek pouches to hide food from your friends, wouldn't you do it too? Nothing like a quiet snack in peace. This week, work together to breed mandrills for this community challenge. Unfortunately, it's too late for us. Four days left on this one. We'd have to build an enclosure and get the animals and then also spend time to actually have those, uh, cheeky monkeys, I guess, be born. Uh, so it's a little too late for us, unfortunately, though. We will be adding the mandrel to the zoo uh, very, very soon, I think. Um, so, I mean, this got hit basically immediately. So there must be enough people playing to still be accomplishing these challenges, at least the easier ones. Uh, but I feel like every animal I've gone to add lately, uh, it's been slim pickings, you know. Now, granted, I'm adding a lot of, like, 
Actually, no. Hold on. I was going to say the Southern White Rhino has been around for so long, but the Southern White Rhino was added in the latest DLC, right? So it's not like it's it's a base animal. Oh, man. Slightly better stats. Significantly more expensive from Rivia over here. Uh, I think we'll go with uh, I think we'll go with the expensive option here. And hopefully, we'll make that money back during our trade session. So that's our one male. We got a couple of females over here, maybe. Not the best of uh, stats, unfortunately. But we can make it work again. Them being from Frontier Zoo is just the the developers like generated animals. That's all. I mean, damn, these are like really not good stats. Fine, Manoka will pick you up. Let's see what we can do with them. Let's go ahead and get our uh, rhinos here. Come on, one, two, three. And put you into quarantine. We might actually not have as much time for uh, management as I'd initially anticipated and hoped for. Go to quarantine, there we go. Cool. Get those guys out and see how they feel about the space. But let's unpause. And uh, I mean, geez, like uh, the thing is, where do we even begin with regards to management? You know, it's like there is so much. There is so much. Um, it's become a little difficult. I mean, I feel like maybe this place has become a little too crowded. We could definitely reduce the uh, the number of, of zebras in here, maybe. I mean, I don't know, actually. That seems like a fine number. That doesn't seem like too much. What about uh, what about giraffes? And that doesn't seem too bad. Now, are you actually using contraception because you are... I guess you don't have to. This would be inbreeding. This would be inbreeding. Alright. So I guess we're actually fine over here. Um, what about the... Uh, what's going on here? Low welfare. Are you in a box? You are. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm well aware that these guys end up in boxes because this isn't, I guess, enough room or something. It's just weird to me that they're able to get here, but they're not able to get out. It just doesn't make sense, you know? That's the part that doesn't make sense to me. Really got to figure out the... Um... Oh, we have a baby. God, they're so cute. They are so cute. Man, I really want to go to the zoo. It's been so long. <laughs> just, I can't get over it. I just can't get over how adorable they are. I hope we get some more uh, babies soon, though. Dangerous fighting for alpha status among these silverbacks over here. Go ahead and... Get Rashid out of here, I assume. Adejola is getting kind of old, though. Rashid... What are your stats like? Not too bad. Not too bad. Go ahead and put you in the trade center. We'll eventually have to get ourselves a new... Uh, uh, a new alpha male here, though. Right? Our current one's uh, a bit on the older side. Getting up there. Getting up there. We're going to need a new one soon. More offspring coming. Why are you on contraceptives? Oh, it's no no harm. I I think uh, we need to like be careful about having too many um, animals as well. Sometimes it's something I don't really do enough of. Worry about having too many animals. I mean, more dingoes joining packs as well. It's tough. Oh my god, you just had a bunch of babies, didn't you? Keeping an eye on those notifications to help with. Uh... They're so cute. To help with uh, uh, inbreeding notifications as well. Sorry. You gotta stay quiet for the animals when they're talking, right? Overcrowding with the Galapagos giant tortoises as well. A lot of notifications I missed. Let's go ahead and... What do we got here? All of these guys, I think. There we go. To the trade center with you. That should help. Everybody else is a juvenile. 
Oh, we're good. These guys are on contraceptives. Do I want to keep them on con- No. Let's let them have more babies. Generations upon generations upon generations. Get you off contraceptives as well. Hungry and injured. Call a vet. Call a keeper. Urgently. Um, over to these guys. Quarantine's been passed. Let's go ahead and select them all and get them moving. Come on. Down to Nati Plains. There it is. All right. And what else do we have going on over here? Overcrowding llamas. Wow, overcrowding warthogs as well. Yeah, see, we have a lot going on. We have a lot going on. Jesus, how many of these guys do we have? Oh, quite a few. Quite a few, okay. Problem is, I hope I'm not, like, breaking up any uh, pairs over here, you know? Let's do that. That's a lot of animals. What is this, a zoo? That's a lot of animals. We, we gotta release you to the wild. Let's go. Hopefully that'll help. Probably actually get rid of a few more. We got a couple of infertile ones over here. Why don't we go ahead and rehome them? Rehome you. Not too expensive. There we go. Now we're better able to sustain the... Uh, the numbers here. I think we should maybe get rid of a few more, actually. We do have an unsustainable number of llamas, I think. At least you guys are the wild as well. There you go. Cool. That That's a lot better. That's a lot better. Uh, overcrowding warthogs as well. Let's go ahead and remove some of these males, I guess, right? We've got, yes, a bunch of new adult Males, I think they just recently became adults. A lot of adult females as well. We should probably do a bit more here. Like, these guys are not getting enough food or anything. Well, they're getting enough food, but not, like, on the feeders and stuff. At least for the wild. There you go. Gozi, are you able to mate, or is everybody inbreeding here? Looks like we're... Oh, you are on contraceptives, though. You're... You should be as well. Right, look at these stats, though. My lord. Aima. Baby. Get you on. Contraceptives as well. Okay, a lot of... Uh, a lot of overlap here. But there are a couple of uh, options for mates. And I think that's actually good enough. Because I, 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 we, we have way too many warthog babies at a time. So, you know what? It is actually not bad. Let's go ahead and get rid of, uh, so Ngozi over here, or Ngozi, I think is how you say that. Please correct me. I don't think it's N, I think it's In, but I, I could be horribly mistaken. Uh, Ngozi over here has fantastic stats. Like, you couldn't ask for better stats, literally. Like, this is amazing. So, we're going to keep uh, him around and actually officially rename him, give him dad status. That's what we were doing, right? DNM. Um, and then the other two, Unica and Adeyola, or Adeyola, 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 I'm not sure. Uh, we will trade out. Oh, Ngozi, you stay. The other two, you must go. And you know what, let's actually release a few of the females into the wild as well. Let's go. Bit more room over here. I think it'll be a bit more comfortable. We could we could release more of them actually. This we have so many in 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 a relatively tight space. Let's release a few more of them. Keep these females because they are the uh, mating options as well, right? There you go. And we, do we need another feeder? I guess or are we kind of okay? Because I don't know if it if it considers. The uh, uh, enrichment items as well in that uh, in this little bar down over here. I don't know. I don't know. We'll keep an eye on this. We'll keep an eye on if they start if they continue to give food like on the ground and stuff. I guess. Uh, what else do we have over here? Thompson's gazelle getting some offspring, llama fighting, warthog fighting. 
offspring from the king penguins. I feel like that was... There's the Galapagos Giant Taurus as well that we helped out. The Western Lowland Gorilla we helped out, yep. Oh, the Springbok has alpha status situations as well. Alright, go and get the uh, Springbok over here. And let's get rid of the extra male Kefeli, I guess. Release you to the wild, buddy. Off you go. Good stuff. That should do the trick there. Cool. I, I feel like we've kind of taken care of all of the major issues. That's a good way to do it, actually. Just go back through these uh, these and, and, and focus on the ones that came up recently. Because I feel like that's more uh, more indicative of, of, of the problem. We've got some trouble over here, actually. I mean, I, I we can tell what the trouble is right off the bat, obviously. Uh, I imagine Abisa, Abiasa and Dian are our oldest? Or no? I think Dian and Permata are probably our oldest. Go ahead and send you to the Trade Center. And hope these guys are fertile. I believe they are. You and... You, yeah, we should be okay. Why is our welfare low? Okay, no, we're, we're good. It just took a second for it to adjust. What's the problem over here? Low welfare, because you are stuck over here? Nah, I think so. Again, I, this used to work perfectly, and then a recent update broke this. We get that from time to time, don't we? The artwork over here, you're upset. Why? A dangerous fighting over here as well. Sounded extremely violent. And extremely violent. We've got a couple too many. To the Trade Center. Let's go. And more trouble over here as well. You know, just as I say, yeah, hey, we've taken care of some of the problems. Nope. Over to the Trade Center with you. Off you go. Dangerous animal has escaped. Hang on now. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Whoops. I did not realize that we're going to have this trouble over here. How do I actually... You know what? I haven't had to repair one of these in so long. I don't remember. How to go about doing it. <laughs> we had another escape. I, I saw that. I saw that uh, gazelle leave as well. It just kind of ran off there. Yikes. Okay, so we actually have to upgrade these to, like, concrete or something, eh? Uh, or to custom-built, um... Custom-built, uh... Pieces. <laughs> Runaway ostrich. I'm not sure. Do I want to do the concrete, or do I want to... Hmm. Or, or I guess I could do, like, steel mesh. Wow. It's become such a habit that it doesn't matter that I completely forgot to check. What do we need over here? Uh, grade 4. Okay, so we could do the steel mesh instead, which I think I would prefer. Let's go ahead. Over to there. And then here, all the way over to here. Actually, no, we gotta go up to there. Come on. Come on, there we go. Up to there. And back over there as well, I guess, right? So, this will be yeah, steel mesh. It's the least, I think... I don't know. I, I might want to cover it up with something, or I might want to do a custom build. Custom build feels like a bit of a cheat, I'll be honest, because like, I'll use wooden material, but somehow this wooden material is stronger than the base game's wooden material. How does that make sense? Um, but I feel like, of the other options, I like the steel mesh. I don't mind the uh, concrete either, at times. Because, you know, you do the concrete, you do it with the, the glass, and, and you get a very similar feel uh, to the wood with the, the glass. But I feel like the steel mesh isn't too bad. I should keep these uh, animals safely inside as well. Oh, look at that. With the sun coming up? Are you kidding me? That's beautiful. Oh my god, this game is so gorgeous sometimes. It blows my mind. Look at that. Look how beautiful it is. Look at the, look at the like, the way the skin catches the light. The level of detail. Oh my god. What are you thinking about, buddy? What's on your mind? Very 
contemplative uh, animal here. He's got uh, he's got things to say, knowledge to share. He's all like, I know a thing or two about uh, living in captivity." How's it going, buddy? You okay? You don't look very happy. Let's check. Oh, just look at just a little, little, like, slivers of light creeping through. The rim light, like, it's just like the way the light catches the... Oh, it's beautiful. Just beautiful. Uh, but yes, let's take a look at... Oh, no, I... Of course I did. Of course I had to get... Well, they're not infertile, so at least there's that, but I did not pay attention to age. Art shelter is becoming a serious problem. Okay, we're gonna have to do something about that right away. Um, again, when we add the Nyala, I think it'll make it pretty close enough to right away, right? Um, I wonder about waiting that long, though. But it does look like everything else is perfect. We're happy about everything else, so that's all good. But that hard shelter is, uh, is definitely, uh, not ideal. Look at this guy. This absolute beast. Look at that. Honestly, the, 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 the artists have done such an incredible job. Has he been drinking water? Is that why his, it is, it, it, his mouth looks wet, right? They're such impressive beasts. Man, look at that. It's nice to just take a moment sometimes. Spend it with the animals, you know. Where you headed off to? Did I scare him? Scare him off? Have him pull a U-turn? I do wonder how they feel about each other. They don't get an interspecies bonus, but they don't hate each other either. How do they feel about each other? Like, are they looking at each other? Are they sizing each other up? Oh, one's going through the other. And just like that, the beauty of the moment is gone. <laughs> Clipping. Kind of gets in the way sometimes, doesn't it? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Dangerous animals escaped. Do we not... Oh, get, get back here. <laughs> that sliding stop was priceless. Oh, almost got away. Almost got away. All right, what are we up to over here? So the African buffalo research has been completed. Uh, you know what that means. Let's go ahead and pause for a second over here as we go to our African buffalo to take a look at some fun facts. Where are you, buddy? There you are. Uh, view Zoopedia over to research status. All right. Waiting for a while for this. Fun fact number one. The African buffalo is one of the most dangerous animals in Africa, killing 200 people a year. Wow. Okay. That is... Uh, that is a fact. I don't know how fun it is. <laughs> no, no, no. That's that's a fun fact. I, you know. The little asterisk next to the word fun. Yikes. 200 people a year. Yikes. Okay. I thought, you know, I thought hippos were more dangerous and stuff, but, but I guess no. African buffalo. Fair enough. Fun fact number two. Unlike other bovid species, the African buffalo is immune to sleeping sickness, a deadly disease transmitted by the tsetse fly. Okay. Well, what is sleeping sickness? What is this? What is this half information? Give me more. I, I mean, that's, this is fine. This is fair. Now I got to look up sleeping sickness. That's, that's uh, like I've always said before, right? A good fun fact gives you enough information so you walk away informed, but not so much information that you walk away without any questions. You, ne you need to be curious. A fun fact makes you curious and, uh, and, and, and engages you in that way. Curious what sleeping sickness is. Obviously something you get from the tsetse fly, but uh, we know that much, but, but what is it? Fun fact number three. African buffalo have excellent memories and have been known to make vengeful attacks against lions and hunters that have targeted their herd in the past, especially if a calf has been injured. Now that is a fun fact. I love finding out about animals that have these like very deep, you know, uh, like memories and, and, and things like that. Like this makes me think of, you know, um, well, elephants, you know, we, we always talk about how elephants have really good memories and all that. Uh, but also crows. Crows are impressive in how much they remember. They Crows can recognize human faces. Crows uh, supposedly understand the concept of, like, give and take and gifting. 
Um, there are stories of crows, uh, you know, returning uh, lost items to people that they recognize because they would, you know, kind of walk a, a typical path. And there, there are there are many many a story out there. Um, there are uh, crows like mourn the loss of others, and cr the intelligence of crows is 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 mind boggling. If you're not familiar with it, I can highly suggest looking it up and 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 diving into it, doing some research. Crow intelligence is mind-boggling, but memory is, is one of those things. They, they remember people, they remember faces, and evidently African buffaloes do too. And that is like it'd be interesting to know that they will they will uh, they will be vengeful. Vengeance is a very it's such a it's a it's not a base instinct. I would say you know venge vengefulness. There are there there are layers. Of, of, of critical thinking, I think at least, maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's a lot more common than I think, but I think, based on my limited knowledge, the desire for vengeance is, 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 it requires so many layers of thought before you get to it, you know? I love it. That's that's there. That's a good one. I like that fun fact. That's a really good fun fact. Fun fact number four. Due to the aggressive nature of the buffalo, all attempts at domestication as a livestock animal have failed. Really? Oh, I thought we've. I thought the buffalo has been used. In 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 like in, you know to to help uh, like with, with farming and stuff before. Maybe I'm mixing it up with with something else. But I, I thought the buffalo was uh not maybe common well actually no I, I did used to think that they were commonly used for or as like farm animals and stuff but clearly i'm mistaken what am i what am i what am i mixing it up with there's crossed wires somewhere but that's interesting they are untamable fair enough fun fact number five african buffalo have a symbiotic relationship with a species of bird called the oxpecker that removes ticks from their skin okay that's one i've known before but it is a fun fun fact uh just because i know it doesn't mean it's not fun but uh, I love a good sim symbiotic relationship, and 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 and, and birds, and um, <laughs> they're, they're they're like designated cleaners. I find for for a lot of uh, for a lot of animals. Um, yeah, this is interesting. This is, that's a decent set of fun facts. I mean, three is especially fun. I would say that is uh, really really interesting to know. But uh, you know, fun fact for uh, for this episode, folks. This is what we're calling it. I don't know if that counts as a fun fact. Maybe not so much. But this is the end of the session today, folks. We are definitely seeing... I mean, look, with the rhinos coming in and still being happy with the amount of space they have, uh, that's very promising, right? Like, we're still... We're still very good with regards to the navigable land area. But, of course, that hard shelter is becoming more and more of a problem. And I'm not even sure if this is going to be enough. I mean, it should be, right? If we make a nice big domed kind of a thing over here with a glass ceiling or perhaps even like an open angle over here. So if you're actually standing here, you can look down and see it. Ah, yeah, I think I like that. This is why it's nice to wait sometimes. Because if I'd rushed this, I would have built something that, you know, guests wouldn't be able to see from and or see into. And it might have been less interesting. But as, you know, as I've spent more time thinking about it, more more and more interesting i think at least ideas have come to mind and i am looking forward to uh to executing uh, uh some of the the visuals that i have uh, i have in mind uh, when the time comes but folks next time again just as a reminder that is midnight eastern time saturday we're doing a live stream uh if you can make it that'd be amazing it's always good to hang out whether you're coming to pick up animals or not um it's nice to hang out i enjoy chilling with the community in that way you get to talk about things and you get to talk about you get to talk about things and in ways that uh, is different, you know, from from comments and from uh, from 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 when I respond to comments either in writing or or in video form or what have you. So it's always a fun time to just hang out and chill. Uh, it'll probably be an hour, an hour and a half or so. So not a very long live stream. Um, and, uh, and 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 yeah, we'll we'll empty out our trade center hopefully, or we'll at least mostly empty it out. And then we'll be back the time after that. Uh, adding the Nyala, and then perhaps at the same time uh, building that hard shelter, uh, and then we're back to our usual cycle of the uh, time lapse episodes with uh, uh, you know with us building enclosures. We'll we'll we'll, we'll talk about the plans for where some uh, upcoming animals will go in the uh, you know during the live stream. I think as well if there's time for it. But uh, for now, folks, that is all for this session. I hope you had a good time. Again, if you did, you know what to do. Let me know down below by leaving a like and a comment. As always, it makes a very big difference in how I approach content on the channel, what I do, what I don't do. Y'all know the drill by now. As always, as well, of course, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. 
y'all keep us alive and running smoothly and of course a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching until next time cheers <laughs>